Why do I love the person-centered approach? First of all, because the person is central in this approach. Not his symptoms, not his sickness. Nor what he does, nor what he has achieved. Just this human being is welcomed and valued for being whoever he or she is. This might sound simple, but gradually I discovered how exceptional this is in a world where you are valued by what you do, or where you risk being identified with your problem. And I also discovered how difficult it is to practice the discipline of not making an immediate judgment about someone. Because that seems to be an automatic response that we have learned from a very young age. Mainly because that's what we have experienced ourselves, that we are not loved simply for who we are. Instead, we are given value according to what we do. And we are loved when we conform to the values of important others. When I started my training in person-centered therapy, I was a student in my twenties. We learned about the necessary conditions of a therapeutic relationship. According to Carl Rogers' theory, it was crucial to be empathic and congruent and to have a positive regard for our clients. We were carefully trained in giving empathic responses and we were encouraged to explore our drives in a personal therapy. Later on in this section, we will come back to the importance of the attitudes and skills needed to communicate empathy and congruence. Now I want to reflect more on unconditional positive regard. I have to admit that I struggled a lot with this condition. Of course, I learned to respond to my clients in a non-judgmental way. And I understood at an intellectual level why it is important to give the other person an open space to explore his experience. But at that time I had no idea of the real depth involved in practicing unconditional positive regard. What gradually became clearer to me was how powerfully someone is helped to grow when they are being loved just as they are without having to meet certain conditions. It is not easy to teach someone how to practice this complex way of being. So how did I learn it? I was lucky to be born in an environment that was not traumatic and my parents and family loved me. I am more and more aware of how blessed I am to have had that positive beginning in my life. On the other hand, at school and in society in general, I soon came to understand that I was appreciated because I was a good student. And later on, I discovered how I had to please as a woman to make my way in a masculine world. All this meant that I took inside myself a lot of these values that I encountered as I grew up and I started to treat myself according to these conditions of worth. Which means I evaluated myself according to the criteria of others and I wasn't aware of how undermining that was for my well-being. Looking back I discovered the importance of those exceptional moments when I encountered someone who appreciated me just for me being me. And that experience of being seen without judgment was extremely helpful in my starting to develop a similar attitude towards myself. Gradually I could allow myself to look inside myself without judging. And so I was able to experience how much openness and creativity could come by my simply bringing an attitude of positive regard to myself. 
that inner experience of non-judgmental presence became more and more of a resource that I could bring to other people. Treating others as I treat myself, making the choice to develop loving presence has grown in me from a deepening awareness and the discipline of practicing an attitude of friendly curiosity. Of course, as a good professional, you have to learn a lot about helpful techniques. And we are lucky that we can demonstrate that the person-centered approach is an evidence-based therapy. But for me, what's most profound to the person-centered approach is this commitment to engage in an encounter with the other person, starting from welcoming this person in an open, warm-hearted way. And then, the person-centered approach also offers you an optimal training in how you can communicate these attitudes in a professional relationship. You need to practice skills to confront someone's problematic behavior in a constructive way. In this section on the person-centered approach, we hope to introduce you to the profound therapeutic power of unconditional positive regard, empathy and congruence. Apply it to your personal life and your professional work.